Jason Ego here. Who am I with? Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Blake the Beast McKernan. Where are you from? Where you fight at? Sacramento, California, man. 916. Now, we're out here in Fresno. Top rank put on a, a good card. Did you enjoy yourself? What'd you oh, think? Oh, yeah, man. It was definitely a good, uh, good night of fights. Uh, definitely an action packed card, man. Everybody that was on the card came out here to bang and really uh, left everything they had in the ring, man. Now, there was a good grudge match. Kilo from Stockton. What'd you think of that particular fight? Uh, Lopez man, and Kilo. Kilo's my boy, man. Me and him have been following each other for a long time on social media. And I instantly, when I saw the kid, I knew that he had a lot of drive and hunger just like myself. And uh, I knew he was going to win. And, um, you know, the biggest thing, I went backstage and told Kilo before the fight to have supreme confidence, uh, move forward and make uh, Joe have to move back and make him uncomfortable. And uh, he did everything he needed to to take over that fight, man. So I'm definitely proud of him. Now, speaking of top rank, we're at a top rank event. You actually fought on a top rank event recently. When was that and how was what was the outcome of that fight? Yeah, so I fought on top rank a couple of months ago up in Fallon, Nevada, and uh, we scored a third round knockout um, or a TKO. And, uh, you can definitely look forward to seeing me on more top ranked shows in the future man now when's your next fight you have a fight coming up uh so right now the, there's in uh talks right now for january 21st in san francisco so uh hopefully i'll be getting matched up on that and then uh you know keep on moving forward cool now being from norcal you're in shape tell them what division you work out like so people know what division are you in so I'm a, a cruiserweight, which is uh, for a lot of people that don't know the weight class, it's 190 to 200. And uh, you know, I'm five and over four knockouts right now, man. So how do you define your style? How would you say, what do you bring to the table? I would define my style that I'm a banger. You know that every time that you come to see me fight, I'm literally prepared and ready to die in the ring. I, I, I just bring it and put it all on the table, man. I will never take a loss and I'll give everything I have before I lose. Perfect. Now, what's your nationality? Your last name is McC Kernan? Yeah, so I'm Scottish and Irish. Okay, Scottish yeah. and Irish. Speaking of Irish, what do you think of Conor McGregor if he comes to boxing? He's Irish. <laughs> Why, you laugh? Why you laugh at your because fellow Irish? I laugh, man, because look, I give everybody the credibility and the credit that's deserved. Conor McGregor is a great MMA fighter. He's a great fighter in general. But when you try to take somebody that's a great MMA fighter and try to put him against a great boxer like Floyd Mayweather, it's like a, a professional fighting an amateur. It doesn't even compare. So uh, I, I hope that McGregor stays in MMA. Not saying that he couldn't do good things in boxing, but he's not even anywhere on the level to be fighting anybody like Mayweather. So he's out of his league if he's he tries to fight. He's completely out of his league and outclassed. All right, now Oscar De La Hoya, he just did an interview with TMZ, and he says his fighter, Canelo Alvarez, would destroy and beat McGregor's ass. That's his words exactly. Do you agree with that? You think Canelo versus Conor McGregor? Who would win that it's one? It's the same exact thing, man. <laughs> it's the same thing. Canelo the banger. You know what I'm saying? You put him in there with somebody like McGregor, it's just he's going to be completely outclassed. So basically, they got to stay in their own arenas. Boxers don't go into MMA, and and um, you know, people they always want to try to venture out and do something different. I understand, and I can appreciate that, but how I look at why and go and mess up a good thing. If you're doing great things in boxing, stay in boxing. If you're doing the great and amazing things in MMA, why would you want to do anything to mess up your legacy? Stay in that area that you're, that's your strong suit and stay doing great things, man. Makes sense. Now, what got you into boxing? You've been boxing for a while. Uh, I've been boxing pretty much my whole life, man. I actually uh, first started getting into boxing in the actual gym when I was 10 years old. I've just been that kid that's always had a fight to survive in his life. You know, I grew up without parents, and uh, you know, fighting just always been a way to kind of keep me out the streets and uh, to keep myself focused. Now, you actually served. Can you tell the fans about that? You served, and uh, you're a veteran. So yeah, you know, what did that born, teach you? born and raised in Sacramento, California. Um, a lot of people don't know, you know, shortly after my father went to prison, I ended up joining the military. And, uh, you know, I'm a combat veteran. I was uh, served three and a half years in the Army on active duty and uh, did one 
uh, 12-month deployment overseas in Iraq and uh, really taught me a lot you know the little things in life that a lot of people take for granted like being able to sleep in bed and knowing that you're safe it's just the list goes on but uh, it was definitely something for me being a street kid something that I needed to kind of help mold me uh, to help mature me as a man so I definitely uh, am very happy that I went in the military the best decision I could have made so it definitely taught you discipline and other things oh, that for a, fact. a fighter needs basically oh for a fact man a lot of hard work and drive uh, and determination man and uh, respect I would say is the biggest thing man now I gotta also ask you I seen you at you were at the ward I think war brand I seen you yeah you're at that fight um, war Kovalev a little bit of controversy some saying he won some saying he lost what was your take you watched the fight I watched the fight and uh, you know I was a little skeptical at the beginning because Andre you know I, I, I'm a big Andre Ward fan um, I was even invited to come to his camp unfortunately we didn't get to work together but I'm a huge fan and when the fight first started, um, everybody knows, you know, Ward was kind of losing the fight in the beginning, but it just goes to show you, you're never out until that last bill, until that last, uh, the last second of the fight. Andre Ward really showed his experience, his drive, his determination, his hunger to want to increase uh, and build his legacy. Just goes to show that jab is the most important punch in boxing. And Andre Ward is somebody that is great at doing that. So as the fight went on, Andre Ward really just broke down Kovla, stabbing him to the body and just keeping him long and uh, keeping him at bay with the jab in. How I look at it, if anybody ever wants to say a fight is skeptical or if they're not happy with the outcome, well, you know what? There's only one way to keep a fight from going to the scorecards, and that's by getting a knockout. And the fighter's the only one that can control that. So if you don't ever want to, you know, uh, worry about the controversy of knowing that you might get burned on a fight because of what the judges saw, you know what? Then as a fighter, you better come in there and handle business and get a knockout. But you know what? You always got to give credit where credit is due. I'm very happy for Andre and the whole core team. Uh, and he's going to continue doing amazing things, man. Definitely. Now, I got to ask you, just because I, I hear a lot of times, like, fighters or fans who don't actually fight, they don't really know what it takes to be a fighter, like taking the punches, being in war. We've seen fights like Kilo. There was cuts, and they were leaking blood. From the mind of a fighter, how does that feel? Like, do you think some of that criticism from people who don't actually fight is a little bit un unfair? At times, yeah, because I think a lot of people might voice their opinions not really understanding the severity of what goes behind being a fighter. And before, and I mean being a fighter, I'm talking about the things that go on in a fighter's life way before you even show up on the night of the fight to get in the ring. All of the things that fighters go through, we literally have some of the toughest lives because of the struggles that we go through and boxing has always been an outlet to keep us focused and driven. I can't speak for all boxers, but out of most boxers that I've met, including myself, we come from having a tough life and a struggle. And boxing has always been that outlet to be able to um, give us some driving determination to want to strive for a better life, man. So all that outside influences behind what going on in a fighter's life is really what dictates the fighter that you see in the ring on the fight night. It all comes down to who is hungry for success and how bad you want to turn your dream into reality. It all comes down to sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice to turn your dream into reality? So when I hear a lot of people, spectators, or uh, people that aren't even really uh, they follow the sport, but they don't they're not involved. participate in it. They're not as involved. There's so much that goes behind being a fighter. Speaking to myself, I train five to five and a half hours a day, five to six days a week. Most people go to work and work a regular job eight hours a day. I'm working a full-time job eight hours a day and training five, five and a half hours a day. So it's a lot of sacrifice, man. So when my biggest thing is being somebody that is a fan or a follower of a, a fighting sport, not just boxing, but any style of fighting, give the men and the women that participate in the sport credit because a lot of people don't realize how much sacrifice and how much punishment and hurt and pain that we put ourselves through to get to where we're at, man, so. Very well said. What's the hardest uh, part of being a fighter? Is it the cutting weight? 
You know, for me, luckily, I don't ever have to cut weight. I usually uh, walk around on my fight weight. You know, I'm always dieting and training year round, so I don't really ever have to worry about cutting too much weight, maybe a couple pounds here and there. Oh, so that's good. So, what's your what's the hardest part about being a fighter? I think the hardest part about being a fighter is what I was just mentioning a second ago is all of the outside influences that you have to go through in life before you even get to the fight. You know, I don't know what a lot of people else have gone through but me throughout the course of my life is I've overcome some uh, traumatic experiences throughout the course of my life losing my father to prison you know my mom being a drug addict you know um, the list goes on so it's really how do you manage on dealing with those things that you deal with outside of the ring to keep you focused to be able to keep training because the biggest thing in fighting is the mentality you know if you get defeated mentally it doesn't matter how good a shape you are in physically so you gotta always just keep uh, a strong mind and a strong will to keep on pushing forward no matter what uh, life throws at you good point now i seen you had an energy drink or something what, what's that about and where can the fans follow you <laughs> so you, I got, you need some energy i got hey man yo boy uh so everybody that knows me my name again is blake the beast mckernan i have my own energy drink it's called is beast it good Fuel. i ain't had it yet it's hey, good man, it's, it's great how did you, how gotta, did you, you gotta try it okay so how did that come can about look it up, uh, beastfuel.com um, you can go on there and check out my energy drink again Blake the Beast from current and Beast Fuel uh, be pretty hard to miss you'll see this beautiful face all over the can <laughs> all right and where can the fans follow you uh, hey if you guys want to follow me you guys can follow me on uh, Facebook as Blake McKernan or on Instagram as Blake the Beast McKernan one all right we look forward to seeing your next fight boxing ego with Blake the Beast we out baby Woo!